my lovely, lovely imps. Tonight, I want to talk with you about non-binary people. <sighs> there has been a lot of discourse about non-binary people in recent months. Nothing, no specific incident is this in reaction to. I've just seen a lot of conversations about non-binary people um, and uh, in, in the general social milieu on the broad, and I say this very broadly, the broad sphere of politics that is the left. And I felt like it would be valuable for me to put a bunch of my thoughts about uh, uh, the term non-binary, about non-binary politics in one place for you. Um, my audience has a lot of non-binary people in it. I, myself, am non-binary. And uh, non-binary itself is a fairly simple term. It basically just means somebody whose identity falls outside of that which is generally considered to be the gender or sex binary. Um, it's a very broad term, and it's a fairly simple term, um, but it's become loaded with all kinds of uh, different assumptions that I think are very, uh, are, are very f not helpful, I'll put it that way, uh, uh, over time. And uh, I wanted to first off open this segment by talking about what being non-binary means for me. Um, because a lot of people will, uh, will notice that I use she, her pronouns uh, and that I consider myself a non-binary trans woman. And some people don't understand what that means and why I would consider that sort of thing. Um, and I'm going to explain that right now. So this is going to be is going to start fairly personal, and then it's going to expand forward, and hopefully the personal will help the political make sense. Um, when I first started my transition, all that I really cared about was being considered a woman. Um, I wanted to have uh, uh, hormones. I had a lot of body dysphoria. Um, most people in my audience are gonna be familiar with the concept of dysphoria, but dysphoria is basically when your body and the way that your body is gives you an incredible amount of, uh, of mental anguish and agony. Um, I have had dysphoria about my body um, for m as long as I can remember. Um, from even when I was a child, um, I was confused as to why my body uh, wasn't like uh, that of, uh, of, of girls that I knew, of, of, of female family members that I knew. Um, and it got worse as I got older. Um, and it culminated with uh, the strongest severity hitting uh, when I started learning about puberty and I realized that, uh, I was, that I was not going to go through a female puberty and instead that I was going to go through a, a male puberty because I was born male and assigned male at birth. Um, and uh, at that time, it started to become very painful for me to the degree that I was religious at the time. I would regularly pray to God that I would instead get to have a female puberty. Um, and... Uh, this sort of stuck with me for my entire life. Uh, this dysphoria um, was uh, fairly uh, disruptive. Uh, it's something that was with me all the way through high school. And I did not, I grew up in an incredibly, incredibly conservative uh, Christian environment. So I had no access to information about trans people. Uh, the books that I was given to learn about stuff did not contain information about transgender people. It did not contain information about uh, about gender non-conforming individuals, uh, I was always taught there is man and there is woman and you are one or you are the other. Um, and I was always taught that man and woman are biological character, like categories, that man and woman, the gender is the same thing as sex. Um, and uh, so when I 
finally got on my own and learned about trans people, most of, I was very concerned mostly with, um, with, with transitioning to female, with transitioning to be a woman, to live my life as a woman, to be identified with she, her pronouns, to take hormones that would shape my body in the feminine manner. Um, and that was mostly my focus. And there was a whole lot that went on. I'm not gonna go super deep into the, my experience with transition here. I've done it before and I'll certainly do it again. It was a complicated experience. And once, uh, and I, I went through a lot of stuff. I, I pursued uh, surgery. I was able to uh, get access to hormones. I changed my name legally. I changed my gender legally. Um, and, uh, and then when I got to the other side of it, uh, of all of that stuff, and I had some time to sit down and think about my life and think about uh, how I felt about the concept of gender, I realized that uh, I don't think I believe that there is a single definition of woman and that I don't believe that there is a single definition of female um, because uh, I don't think that's ever been the case. Um, that it is not accurate to say that there is only one single definition of this. And that was when I realized that while I identify strongly with, with a very nebulous and vague concept of womanhood and, the, and a vague and nebulous concept of femininity, that what I am and who I am and how I am identified and how I engage with the world is beyond just that. And I believe this is true for everyone even the most binary uh, woman or binary man that you can imagine. I believe that in truth, uh, they, the way they engage with the world is greater than the binary that they've been placed on by society. And that was when I realized that actually, I don't want to be bound by the binary. I want to be able to play with gender however I see fit and uh, and that is why I call myself a non-binary trans woman, because while I have a lot of affinity for femininity, as you can probably tell, you know, uh, the painted nails, the jewelry, the fancy outfits, although today I'm just wearing a, a, a kind of stylish t-shirt, but um, I have a lot of, of strong affinity for this very nebulous concept of femininity. But I don't believe there's only one true form of femininity or one true form of womanhood. And I want to reject that explicitly in my own life and in my politics, which led me to conclude that I am indeed non-binary. I do not bind myself. Even if I draw a ton of inspiration from femininity, even if I love my she, her pronouns, and I think that is a per very accurate way to refer to me, that I don't believe that I'm limited by that. And I think that also shows in the way that I go about things and the way that I talk about things. So I hope that that all kind of makes sense to you. Uh, you now understand my, you know, sort of path that I took to coming to this understanding. Um, hey, thank you so much, President Sunday. I really appreciate that. Um, the concept of non-binary is in is, is is it's fairly well understood at least on the left side of the world um i will say that on the right they don't know anything about gender they literally think that uh they, they don't they don't actually have any coherent definition of gender either that's something that i should say um people might hear me talking about gender and say well you know you say there's no single one definition of woman well i guess you can't answer the question what is a woman well of course i can um, uh, it, it's fairly easy for me uh, to answer the question of what is a woman. A woman is any person who desires to be a woman and identifies with that structure. You self-select, it is an identity group. Being a woman is about accepting, uh, it is about accepting that role onto yourself and saying, yes, I am a woman. Um, but as for what a woman physically looks like, how that shakes out into the world, that is going to vary completely. You have women who are athletes. You have women who are girl bosses. You have women in the world who are anime nerds and never leave the house. You have women who are princesses. You have women who are uh, 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 beauty queens. There are all kinds, there are so many different kinds of women. It is impossible to capture all types of women in a single definition other than the fact 
that women choose to be women. Women say, I am a woman. This is the structure that I want to identify with. Now, maybe someday there won't be any more utility left to using the term woman or man, and those terms might not even exist anymore. There might just be people who do the stuff that we used to associate with women, and I would be totally fine with that. But for now, we have this concept of womanhood, and it's a very big concept. There are old women, young women, women with t tall women, short women, women with short hair, women with long hair, aggressive women, passive women, intellectual women, bimbos. There is all types of women out there in the world, okay? Um, same thing goes for men. All of this applies to men as well. Um, there, and, and the only thing that binds them all together is that they put on the mantle of that identity. That is the only thing that binds them all together. Um, now, uh, uh, on the conservative side of the world, if you ask people what is a man and what is a woman, you will get a bunch of different answers. And all of them will be incredibly stringent and often very defensive about it. Uh, sometimes you will get the, well, a man is somebody with a penis and a woman is someone with a vagina. Sometimes you will get, well, a woman is, is, the, is, is passive. They're the feminine side of God. Women uh, like to serve and like to, uh, you know, nurture. Men are aggressive and dominant and all that. That's another thing you might get. You might get uh, some, some uh, you know, types of right-wingers might say, well, a, a woman has, you know, uh, XX chromosomes and a man has XY chromosomes. Um, and all of them will be will smugly believe that all other people of the of their t of their side of the world believe the same thing, but um, none of those are actually universally held. And I've done this. I've gone and talked to a lot of right wingers in my life. I've asked them about gender. I've had to as a part of my life growing up as a conservative while being trans and eventually coming to terms with my transness. I've had this conversation. And if you get conservatives all in a room, none of them will give you the same answer, but all of them will insist that their answer is written in law and cannot be changed. That a woman, whatever their definition is, cannot be a man and a man cannot be a woman because their definition is strictly binary. There are two types of people in the world and it's either their chromosomes or maybe their genitalia or maybe their capability for, re or for uh, reproduction or maybe their motherliness or maybe their submissiveness. One of those things is the iron law of heaven, okay? It is essentialism and it is interestingly more difficult to come to an answer, a coherent answer of something like what is a woman or what is a man with a conservatives or with conservatives as a group uh, than it is with somebody like me, a, uh, you know, a gender freak, so to say. Um, but here on the left, most people are at least somewhat familiar, even liberals are at least somewhat familiar with the term non-binary. But there's something unfortunate that has happened, and I think that it's a result of binary thinking not actually being um, fully deconstructed. And this, uh, what I'm talking about is the third gender phenomenon, which is that uh, it's, it's the not man nor woman, but a secret third thing. It's this idea that, you're, that the genders aren't he and she, but they're he and she and they and that uh, there's actually just a third gender, that it's a gender trinary instead of a binary. Um, but I think that that's absurd and it completely, uh, it, it completely ignores uh, uh, the observational reality of how gender works in our world and also just basically locks you into an essentialist thought. Okay, well, um, you are either man or woman or you're 50% of each. And, and that leads to all kinds of assumptions and prejudices and whatever. It doesn't really solve any problems. Um, and there's an interesting, it's weird because the way that this, that this phenomenon manifests is sometimes in the form of hostility to gender identities that are not just they. You know, they, the non-binary they. 
um, you see maybe hostility to neo pronouns. You have hostility to uh, what what are sometimes referred to as xenogenders. Um, you will see hostility to all kinds of different structures of gender that don't fall into an essentialist trinary now instead of an essentialist binary. And I think that's really um, intellectually a weak position and that people should uh, think a little deeper about it. Because um, any, any trans person, even a binary trans person, is non-binary to a certain degree. If you are a trans person, if we're looking at this in the binary model, right? Or even let's say the trinary model, okay? If you go from living your life in one gender category to another gender category, you are crossing in your life's experience all the way across a million different micro expressions at any moment where when you're starting hormones, when you're not identifying with she, her, but you know that you're trans, when you are identifying with she, her, but maybe you're just wearing a hoodie because you don't want anybody to see you or whatever. Um, uh, and and so every trans person is in one way or another uh, challenging the binary. They are existing outside of the binary. And the reason for this is because the binary is a not, it is not a true concept. The binary is false. It is purely a construct. And uh, the world doesn't exist in that way. Um, and, and also, I think this even applies to some cis people. What happens when someone who identifies as female and was born and assigned female at birth, you know, cuts their hair short and gets misgendered or is perceived as a, a boy or a man? They have had a cross-gender experience that shows that it is not so easy to sort people into two distinct categories. And in fact, even in popular culture, we have other categories, the tomboy and the tom girl, or some people might call them a sissy or a fruit or anything. There's a whole bunch of different terms that are, some of them are meaner than others. The femboy. These all exist in the popular consciousness, but they're not acknowledged. And they're not acknowledged because there is a severe and often violent uh, uh, adherence to a binary. And this carries over even into people who have begun to think a little bit bigger about gender. Even in liberals and lefties sometimes carry these prejudices with them. And uh, so I've said all of that. The next part, uh, of course, uh, is to talk about um, non-binary people and how they engage with healthcare and politics. Um, I've actually seen a shocking amount of uh, of of struggle in 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 many spaces with the idea of femboys taking HRT with the idea of non-binary people having access to HRT or to uh, gender-affirming surgeries. And it's one of the strangest things to me because I feel like it betrays a complete misunderstanding of how any of this works. Um, <laughs> the, the, the reason that we advocate for uh, uh, people to be able to get access to hormones and the reason that we advocate for people to have access to gender affirming surgeries that make them happy is because it makes them better. It makes them fuller people. It makes them happier. It makes them whole. It makes them feel good about themselves and live full, fully fulfilled lives. It alleviates pain. It allows them to express themselves truthfully as themselves. We don't do it because uh, because you sh you should ju on like just a very cold level you should be able to switch the switch. Any argument for HRT that applies to a binary trans person also applies to a non-binary person.
And there's an interesting thing I've seen come up um, in some of these discussions, which is, well, there's no science that says that femboys are happier uh, or non-binary people are happier when they're given access to HRT. And to that I say, you are full of shit. First of all, there actually are and already have been some studies, admittedly few, done on non-binary and gender non-conforming people explicitly. But secondly, many people who are identified by the medical system in this very moment are currently actually non-binary people. And the reason for that is because the medical system only acknowledges the binary in many cases. Now, there are some exceptions to this. There are indeed clinics and some hospitals even that acknowledge non-binary and even will collect data and listen to that. But as it stands currently, there are doctors who are very well educated uh, and plugged in in helping trans people live their best lives who regularly and knowingly and happily help their patients get, their non-binary patients get access to hormones. But a lot of the research, the biggest research that has been done, has been done on a purely binary lens. Which does not mean that non-binary people don't benefit from HRT. It simply means that the measurements being done are completely insufficient. Um, if someone was to do a science experiment that, uh, that said that the Earth was 50% air and 50% Earth, and you looked at that and you said, well, that's not true because there's water and there's trees and there's animals and there's clouds, which are like a mixture of air and earth. And they just said, well, no, 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 no. You see mountains or sorry, uh, clouds count as air, water counts as earth, animals count as earth, birds count as air. You would go, wait, that's crazy. That's absurd. And the same thing applies to non-binary people. Um, just because scientists used a flawed taxonomical system or a very limited tax taxonomical system for certain aspects of society does not mean that we should somehow restrict femboys or gender non-conforming people or non-binary people from getting access to the health care that they need uh, to to thrive. It's almost like we new, learn new things all the time, right, and that we should prioritize humanity and human needs above that. Above uh, a, a, re, a literally reactionary approach to science, that, so, that we have to, uh, we can only help someone if we have a study that happens to land on the correct taxonomical system and also prove that that's ridiculous, it's absurd. We don't do this for any other uh, uh, situation. An example of this is um, uh, we, we give medicine to all kinds of different humans, even though every human is technically, every human is different. Every human has different genetics, every human has different allergies, all kinds of different things, we still will give medicine to humans if they need it because we know that it tends to work on humans. And if there's an adverse effect, we'll either take caution as necessary or we will wait and see if there's an adverse reaction. You see what I mean? So I wanted to address a couple of those things. Um, but also this applies to law as well. Because uh, let's say, I'm just gonna imagine a, an imaginary law here. Let's say there is a law that is written that says um, all trans people, or let's, let's, let's speci specify it. Trans women and trans men have rights. Now what happens if you are not a trans woman or a trans man, but you are non-binary in some way? but your needs and rights are similar to those of a trans woman or a trans man, do you think that it would be just for you to be excluded from having rights simply because the lawmaker wrote the category incorrectly? Of course not. We can acknowledge that both morally and ethically, uh, it would be 
obvious to either revise the law immediately or to acknowledge that the law was too limited to, uh, to uh, in interact with reality. So you can see where I'm going with this. I have seen people, uh, I have seen some very weird things come up once we get to this point, which is sometimes people will bring up uh, concerns about, uh, about drugs and surgery, and it will go something like this. Well, you know, sure, I can acknowledge that there's a chance that, uh, you know, this is them saying this. I can acknowledge there's a chance that, you know, non-binary people benefit from HRT, but since we don't really have any studies, our studies are flawed and inevitably do actually include non-binary people benefiting from HRT, well, we should probably just wait on that. We don't want to put them in danger. Hormones are, you know, they're a drug, right? Almost everything is a drug. That's that's my response to that is damn near everything that you ingest is a is a drug of some sort, okay? And there are so many drugs that are not not uh you know uh legislated in any way uh or are over the counter. And if we do an analysis of if we if we do a if we're real and we analyze the actual risks of HRT uh, we can we can very quickly uh, realize that the risks of HRT are well within the ability of people to uh, to understand and consent to. We have such a solid understanding of what estrogen and testosterone and progesterone does to your body. Um, not a perfect understanding, but a good one. That it is easy to communicate this to people. You notice how that there's no regulation on, uh, there's, there's essentially no regulation. There is some regulation, but there's very little regulation on something like caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant, a stimulant that a lot of people get addicted to, a stimulant that can kill you. It's actually surprisingly easy to overdose on caffeine and people do it. Um, and yet we allow people to consume caffeine at will because we assume that as, as agents, that they are able to analyze the benefits and downsides of caffeine and decide whether they want to drink that coffee, that tea, or most shockingly, that energy drink. There's all kinds of drugs like this. I could go on for hours. Uh, and, and by the way, I want to be clear, this is why I argue explicitly for a... Uh, uh, for a informed consent model for trans healthcare. I think that a tr informed consent model where a trans person can go to a doctor and say, I am trans, I would like to pursue hormone therapy. Uh, uh, and then the doctor says, okay, let me discuss the risks with you. You understand the risks, here you go, is the only rational model that I know of, okay? It is the only model that makes any sense. It, it from a from a enforcement pr perspective, from a uh, uh, from a a moral perspective, and from a health perspective. Because any other model puts a doctor in the position of interrogating the most internal recesses of the mind, and also puts a doctor in the position of uh, of of imposing a absurd standard on on what are very clearly social constructs, the social construct of gender, and uh, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea uh, to have a doctor have to sit there and go, "Hmm, is this person really trans?" It also creates a antagonism between the well-being of a patient who is seeking to better their life by shaping their body uh, and the doctor. People have the right to shape their own body that they live in. We don't, doctors aren't able to, you know, doctors don't forbid you legally from working out, from eating or dieting. Uh, they don't forbid you from putting on makeup. 
They don't forbid you from sculpting your abs if you so desire it. They don't forgive. They don't uh, forbid you from having your uh, eyebrows done. They don't forbid you from cutting your hair. All of these things can have negative effects, and yet doctors don't uh, uh, gatekeep on that. And the reason for that is because people are agents and should be able to control what they do with their own body. And in fact, it is very important for people to be able to, ex to take care of their body how they desire and how they wish. It is deeply important. Now that is something that has been heavily researched. On top of all of this that I've said so far, um, and I hope all of this is making sense to you so far, but on top of all of this, there is the obvious fact, which is that there is no controversy around HRT being given to cis people. It is remarkably easy for cisgender people to get access to HRT to the degree that I, I, I mean, I always tell this anecdote, but uh, you can just verify whether or not this is true. You can just search it for yourself online, whether you believe me or not. But I remember when I used to work in a garage uh, cleaning and, and uh, doing maintenance on cars back when I was in college for, uh, I worked that for a little bit. And uh, there used to be this, uh, this commercial up in upstate New York it was like, are you feeling low energy? Are you feeling like you just can't quite, you're not quite yourself? Well, it could be that your testosterone's low. Call doctor whatever, whatever, whatever for HRT today. Call my office and ask for HRT today. I'm not even, I'm not even kidding you. That was the ad, okay? Yeah, these bill, yeah, there you go. Spiral gal, billboards like this are all over around Chicagoland. Getting access to tea or estrogen is incredibly easy for, um, is, is, is incredibly easy for cis people to the degree that it's no difficulty. And all, and and to, it's literally it. I, I, I've spoken to cis people who've gone to their doctor and been like, I feel like my tea lows, doc. My T is low, doc. And then they get their blood done and the doctor's like, well, you know, it's in the normal range, but it's lower than the maximum. Here's some testosterone, uh, uh, you know, here's some testosterone injections for you to get that, get that up to a level where you're comfortable. So gender dysphoria, which that is what that is, that is the a applicable to gender dysphoria is totally fine and uncontroversial in cis people. But all of a sudden when it's trans people, specifically when it's non-binary trans people, it's a problem. We have to be all suspicious and we have to pretend like it's the most dangerous thing on the planet. Come on, we know what this is. We know what this is. That's prejudice. That's discrimination. Redcon404 says, this is reminding me of the episode of King of the Hill where Hank goes through a second puberty because Peggy puts t uh, uh, testosterone in his lemonade. <laughs> yes. I think that the time has come for people to embrace a more holistic politics around gender um, out of fear and sometimes necessity, people take the safest approach in their interpretation of gender. Well, some people just wanna be the other gender and some people just wanna be the other gender, you know, in both directions. Some people just wanna be men and some people just wanna be women and then leave it at that. When in reality, we know that it's more complicated than that. That there are people, many people, who aren't happy in either one of these binary positions, but could be very happy with their own self-defined position in the world. We should embrace that. It is not any harder to win that right than it is to win the right uh, to flip the genders. It is, a, it, is a, it is a trick that people tell themselves that it's easier to win uh, uh, just gender flip rather than challenging this I, this absurd idea of gender. And of course, if we don't do that, then it leaves us in a position where trans people of all types, where b even binary trans people are uh, put at a disadvantage because we didn't actually decide to challenge the issue as a whole, instead we tried to find a way to compromise with people who don't even believe in our existence at all. They believe that God writes, you know, woman or man on, on a little envelope and gives it to the stork when, you're, when your soul is born. Um, but, uh, you know, 
the idea that like you can win that position more is just simply not true and it leaves people out to dry because it means that the only answer is to say, okay, doctors, now you get to try and make a decision as to whether you think any person who comes into your office is a real trans person or not, which means non-binary people have to lie about themselves and binary people have to be afraid that they might be, be, they might be miscategorized and restricted pointlessly from HRT. Do you see what I'm talking about, about how absurd it is to uh, to just say, eh, it's easier to just, you know, I, I bet those guys who call us groomers all the time will totally agree if we just stick to a binary model and don't ever think about the non-binary model. It's not actually any easier. It's actually just as hard. You're just winning a worse prize at the end. You're picking on a struggle with people who call you a groomer all the time and you're just choosing a worse result for yourself and for everyone else. Bastet's passion says so often this difference is in a, in so-called strategic position is just mask it, is just a mask for thinking that NBs aren't real or thinking that they're cringe or whatever. There's all kinds of reasons that people engage in this type of shit, but it must be rejected. It needs to be rejected. And part of the reason why I'm so carefully going through all of these arguments here and taking so much time is because I want the people who watch my channel, the people who, who, who are a part of my community, I want you to be equipped and also because I want non-binary people out there to know that this community stands with you. It stands with me because I'm non-binary, but I mean the other non-binary people out there who aren't me, my community is going to stand with you and I am always going to push for people to advocate for this type of politics, a politics that recognizes the fundamental flaws of a binary structure, that recognizes that the only path to a healthy access to HRT is a informed consent model, a model where these extreme, these, these hormones that our body produce naturally are not to be treated like narcotics, are not to be treated like some sort of dangerous drug, conveniently only when it's trans people who want them. That is what I'm pushing for, and I want people to know that, and I want people in my community to take that position as well. I want to encourage you to take that position with courage, and I want to give you the tools to take that position. I do not think, I, and this is where I'm just gonna be a little bit more firm because so far this has been sort of a methodical explanation of my beliefs and my arguments on various aspects of the discussion around non-binary identities. But this part, I want you to hear me loud and clear. We do not gain anything as a community, as a world, by cutting out or leaving behind so-called inconvenient members of our community. Regardless of who you think that might be, whether you think the neo-pronoun people are too inconvenient because their names uh, get made fun of on 4chan, or whether it's the xenogender people that you think are cringe or whatever or inconvenient because their names get made fun of on 4chan, or the non-binary people who you think are inconvenient because, well, oh wait, their names get made fun of on 4chan. Uh, I don't care. We do not win by splitting solidarity. You don't win a war, whether it's a culture war or a physical war, by routing. You don't win by not standing together side by side, okay? It's, it's not how it works. You lose. And even if you were to win, you would, it would be a false victory. Because like I said, you would be winning something that was untruthful. You would be winning a state of the world where random, the random whims of your local doctor get to decide whether you're trans enough or not to actually get access to what you need to be happy and thrive and live the life that you deserve to live. For what? For what? What victory are you getting in that position? It's a fool's bargain. It is a truly foolish bargain. We don't win by breaking that type of solidarity. We don't win by throwing uh, uh, other people under the bus. We don't win by, uh, by uh, d d you know, out of fear of the reactionary, 
uh, uh, you know, othering other people who've done nothing wrong. And of course, it literally only helps them. Because remember, even, even the most stealth, binary, passing trans person in the world is still a groomer freak, quote unquote, to these people. You don't win anything by trying to compromise with people who think that God made you wrong and that you need to be thrown into hell. You will not win. Thankfully, hell is on your side. And is it not a powerful side? We are stronger together. We are stronger when we encourage one another, when we work to liberate one another, when we don't uh, balk and let our spines turn to jelly in the face of, uh, of, of conservative hatred and bigotry. We do not win on that front. We stand together. We stand strong. Now, I think I touched on basically everything that I can think of when it comes to non-binary stuff. But if there's anything here that anybody has or any questions or contentions or whatever, please drop them in chat. Or if you're watching this video in the future, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try to respond. Um, th this was, I've been thinking about this for a while and putting this together, but it's still, I'm a streamer. So sometimes I miss things. Subs and soda. Maybe this is a dumb question, but is there a difference between HRT and just taking hormones? I'm a cis guy and will probably have to take testosterone for gynecomastia. Um, there's not really a difference. It's just a difference in terminology. HRT refers to cr taking, uh, replacing one hormone with a different hormone, whereas taking hormones is just like adding a hormone to your current mix. Um, but the truth is, when you break it down, um, everybody's body has some estrogen and some testosterone in it. And uh, if your body, if you're adding T to your body, you're taking up receptors that could be used by estrogen that is already in your body. So it's literally just a, it, it's just a semantic distinction. There's not truly that much of a difference. Skunksy says, can I just say thank you? I'm an emotional wreck. You're welcome. And in truth, you do not have to thank me for, whole, for standing to a basic standard of morality and beliefs. I, I do not believe in kowtowing to bullies. I do not believe in uh, pulling the ladder up behind me. I do not believe in leaving behind people who, uh, who uh, are deemed by some other random people to be um, inconvenient or complicated. I don't care. Sometimes it's complicated. Guys, here's another example. Here's, a, here's another example. Uh, you wanna know what's really hard to do? Convince people that evolution is true. But that doesn't mean that you don't do it. That doesn't mean that you don't say, no, actually evolution is true. Even if it's, it, it's inconvenient. It's super inconvenient to try and convince people that evolution is true. Evolution is complicated and people have all kinds of ridiculous arguments against it, but it's still worth doing because it's the truth. It is better to stand strong on a truthful position. You are more powerful for it. We are more powerful for it. Join me on the hellish left, the giga chad left, the left that's not afraid of what it believes in. The left that stands for what it actually believes and stands for the truth. No more of this coward shit. Stand with me, stand with me. There you go. There's my rant, my rant for you. Killjoy40k says, I feel like people really forget that gender roles in psychology was literally invented by quacks and charlatans and should always be taken with a grain of salt because of how much detangling from those foundations still needs to be done. Of course, gender roles in psychology, um, Freud was fucking nuts. And if you don't believe me, go read what Floyd, what Freud actually said. Freud was so far off base. Now. He had some things that got people thinking, but he also did a lot of fucking absolutely psychotic shit. And he treated some of his patients like hell. Freud was a, a, not a good guy. 
and a lot and m most everything that he believed was later proven to be wrong just remember that okay keep everything with a grain of salt okay and be keep asking questions keep looking deeper and never assume that just because something is the way that it's done now that that's the right answer okay Louis Boy says, there's a Christian philosophy professor that told me that it's wrong that trans people should change, shouldn't change their bodies because he believes that trans people should reconciliate their mind and body, whatever that means. Changing your body is a way to reconciliate your mind and body. And it's often the right way. Sometimes it's not. There are circumstances where, rec where the reconciliation of your mind and body involves uh, saying, hey, this decision isn't for me. But there are also situations where it is. Are you gonna say that somebody who uh, wants to lose weight shouldn't lose weight because they should just accept uh, their body the, the way God made them? That, are you trying to tell me that if somebody has a cold that they shouldn't take medicine for it because they should just reconciliate their mind and their body and that feeling bad from a cold is just the way it's supposed to be? That's absurd. It's an anti-intellectual position. It's ridiculous. Reject it outright. Sophie says, as a cis, I'm not even gonna call you a filthy cis. You called yourself a filthy cis. As a filthy cisgender, this stuff is fascinating to me. I've actually become more comfortable in myself and my identity from interacting with trans people because they're some of the nicest and most accepting people out there and I feel comfy and at home with them. Good, you should. I, I sometimes goof around and say that trans people exist on another level of reality. And obviously, some trans people are dumb as shit. It's just true. There are trans people of all types. There are some dumb asshole trans people out there. Uh, some would argue that I'm one of them. I don't think I am. I think I'm cool. But, uh, but trans people on the base level, they are challenging gender, which is so ingrained in our society, which means that you're engaging with a group of people who just think completely differently, by and large, about structures that are painful and hurtful. Um, gender is horrific. It is so bad to men and women. It is so bad to cis people. Gender is so, the, the, the structure of gender, especially in America, is fucking backwards. This men don't cry, women get in the kitchen, women need to constantly uh, 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 be the skinniest they can possibly be, and if they don't have big tits, they may as well not exist. This type of shit is brutal to cis people and trans people alike. And trans people just kind of take the step and say, I should be able to live wherever I want in this, in this nebulous mess zone. Mara K. Grizzly says, oh, it's so interesting. The people who argue against changing people's bodies actually will then argue that cis people should change their bodies if they deviate from ideals in any way, shape or form. Yeah, it's actually crazy. The people who are like, it's against God's will to change your body to be a woman or a man or whatever you want to be. And then they'll be like, my wife, you need to lose some goddamn weight and you need to get a boob job so you can make me happier. God said so. They're deranged. It's deranged. Yep, deranged. Skunksy says, I'm trans as fuck and I've been dying on the inside for years now and you're right, that doesn't help anyone, much less myself. No, it doesn't. It Take gender into your own hands. Ascend the chains of gender. Free yourself from them. You are going to be in good company. There are many of us. There are many of us. Killjoy40k says the lack of acknowledgement of the body horror of puberty and gender identity is unreal. People literally lose their minds during puberty because of the inherent dysphoria attached to the life event. Yes, c not even just trans people, cis people lose their fucking minds during puberty because their body is changing in ways they don't understand and they can't always cope with it. Sometimes, like uh, constantly this happens. This happens constantly to people who don't who aren't even close to being trans but also trans people have to sit there and look at the, the look, or look at the fact oh my god my body is going to change in ways that are horrifying to me and we're supposed to say oh that doesn't matter just just suffer that's stupid that's backwards it's ridiculous it's a rejection of 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 agency it's a rejection of liberation Anybody who argues that you should just have to sit there while your body does something to you that you truly do not want it to do does not believe in liberation and needs to develop their politics further. I wanted to read this comment. I got a, I got a dono. First of all, 
Toxic Cancun, thank you very much for the $15 in super chats. The first one says, non-binary is flexible, but most likely to be a woman, or this part may come from bad faith. Non-binary as in you do not give a fuck or both. I appreciate your channel, so I hope that you understand. Uh, and then you said, I understand now, I get it, yes. Non-binary is a broad umbrella that expresses all kinds of different ways to live your life that don't fall into a binary. Um, as it turns out, in truth, the big secret, that here's here it is, you guys stuck around for this whole time, the true secret is that it's all, none of it's real. None of gender is real, okay? We are just with our bodies and we either like them or don't to varying degrees and there are all kinds of complicated reasons for that and we should be able to find a way to be happy in our bodies. We should be able to find a way to be happy in our lives. Cis people vary from their I, from from the binary constantly. I said that in the very beginning. The binary is false. It was constructed. Somebody put up shitty wood panels around what they thought were the ideals, but they don't even they, it doesn't even work. Gender. This is why I am a gender ascensionist. I believe we must ascend this limited concept of gender. We must move beyond it into a happier world where people can just be who they are and be attracted to who they want to be attracted to. It can if you want it to be, Snoojin. It's up to you. You can decide whether that fits or not. I mean, personally, I think uh, I think if you're comfortable with that and if you, you know, I, I personally would say you totally could consider yourself non-binary. If you want to, it's up to you. That's for you to decide. Louis Boy says, adolescence is fucking insane for cis people. The cis guys have gender dysphoria and suffer if they're not masculine enough, and cis girls suffer if puberty makes them more masculine at all. It's during puberty that we should teach people about how gender doesn't fucking matter, to make gender their bitch. Yeah. All right. That's, I think, everything that I have to say. Uh, I will probably revisit this topic in the future. If you like this segment, please subscribe to my channel. I talk about gender all the time. It's a topic I talk about a lot, in addition to all kinds of other things. But I would love to have your subscribe and your like down below. Thank you very, very much for watching Demon Mama.